All right, high rollers. I've been meaning to have this guy on for a while. I have apologized to him. His system looks very interesting, but also complex, and I'm not a numbers guy. But I do love darts. He does as well. Lendl Faria is the founder of Darts Alo, soon to be called the Faria Darting Index, FDI. Remember the name, because if you are a betting person, this system is for you. It helps you break it all down darts baby and it helps you find the true ranking of a player forget the order of merit this guy thinks he's got it figured out on a deeper and more sophisticated level at darts alo one on twitter lendo welcome to the show man thanks for being our high roller today yeah thank you for having me on i really appreciate your time at long last my bad on that i should have had john a while ago i do apologize but i did see your interview on darts planet tv fantastic and now I'm even more intrigued by your system. First off, Darts Alo, FDI, what's happening there? Yeah, it's a, it's a name change because I think, as of now, it was more like an Alo type based thing. It still is, but I think I have, I have to put my own name on it and make sure that it represents more. And yeah, I think this name uh, really describes it more what it is. I think people know what an index number is. Uh, it is a number which uh, represents a mood or some some kind of uh, development, and which is, how do you say, relative to under numbers. And yeah, Furia for, for is my own uh, surname. And uh, Darting, yeah, is self-explanatory, so um, that's why I came up with this name. Well, I think it's a great name. I come from a poker background, and you know, in poker, they've got all these databases, all the rankings, the money leaders, the points leaders, all of that, the GPI. I like the use of the word index, because that's what you're really compiling, the Faria Darting Index. Remember that. Okay, so in your opinion, the PDC order of merit is not really fair. It doesn't provide a proper indication of where someone sits. So you decided to take it further using a chess model, right? Yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, in chess, uh, you had yeah the Elo system named after Arpad Elo, who is a Hungarian American uh, chess player, and uh, he came up with uh, a set of formulas which indicates the level of play of a uh, certain chess player very well. And I decided to uh, make my own formula uh, based on that, and yeah, and I tried to do it with darts and see if it comes up with a better ranking than uh, what the order of merit is or the BDO system and I just put all the numbers in and just compile them to to one ranking and that's uh that's my ranking and I think it turned out pretty well really well it seems like you're having success with it I want to talk more about this order of merit because in that darts planet interview you said that it's heavily weighted on the world championship and that's why it's not really indicative of what's really going on yeah, true. It's not only that, of course, the World Championship is heavily weighted, weighted with, I think it's a half a million right now for uh, half a million pounds for the winner right now. But if we take a look at uh, Daryl Gurney, he is now number three in the world. And it doesn't matter if he plays well or if he doesn't play well, he's bound to go down the rankings in the next six months. Because he won the World Grand Prix two years ago. Uh, let's say if he goes to the final and he gets beaten by Van Gerwe, his money goes down because he won it two years ago. So it's really heavily weighted on shoulders of players to defend their money. Right now, it's just with the FDI, it's just if you play good, if you play better than expected, you go up. If you play worse than expected, you go down, which I think is a fair system, to be honest. Okay, so we're going to talk more about Daryl Gurney and the German Darts Championship in a second. But with respect to Super Chin, you're saying that his ranking is going to go down, that right now he's world number three. He's got to be in that position though, right? Don't you think? Like, if his ranking goes down, then the order of merit sort of fails. Yeah, that's, that's my opinion. Because he's right now he is one of the best of the world, of course. He's number three. He, he plays at a, at a level which merits a top five position. It is heavily weighted because right now, 18 months ago, he, he won a tournament which is more important than a few tournaments that some people have won a week ago or three weeks ago or four weeks ago. So it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a strange system. I got you. I'm wondering also when you talk about the world championship, guys like Bully Boy, who of course yeah. reached the final, and Nathan Aspinall, who got to the semis, had a great payday. Of course, he goes on to win the UK Open. So where do you put guys like that right now? I have 
Nathan Asmo, uh, like when he won the UK, he was like ninth, and right now he's 16th, 15th, 16th, right that position. And Michael Smith, yeah, he was one of the best, but when he got that groin problem, he got surgery. And right now, I think he's recovering from that. His level of play went down a little bit. So right now, he's around about ninth of that position. Now, is this system for amateurs and pros? Are you expanding it right down the darts ladder? Uh, Yes, I'm intending to do that even more so. Right now, uh, in England, you have the British Inter-County Competition, BICC. And I try to incorporate that too. And in Holland, you also have like Super League, where amateur players play some of the PDC guys. So I'm intending to do even more of that so that people, when the website is ready, people can compare themselves to a Michael Van Gerwen or a Gary Anderson or those type of players. Let's talk about the website. You've got it coming out relatively soon, right? Yeah, like I think July, right about then. We're still working on it, me and a few mates of mine, but yeah. We uh, intend to uh, uh, to do it uh, within uh, a couple of months, and we intend to do it quite responsive. Our aim is to uh, have the rankings, have all types of rankings in it, not only PDC, but also BDO, also uh, PDC Asia, even Africa, and also a compiled ranking, so you can see like every player in one ranking, and also some type of form where if you were to fill two names in, you get a, a format, a best of 11 legs or 13 legs or whatever. Uh, then you get a win, a win percentage. It's amazing, man. It's a great time to be coming up with a website like this, a complete index, because I just want your thoughts on the, the growth of darts. I mean, it's you mentioned Africa. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Now, even in South America and New Zealand, every part of the world is expanding big, so... Yeah, it's a good time to start this thing, really, to get a website up of this uh, of this thing. Yeah, FDI. I think uh, one of the implications, a strong implication here, of course, is betting. I mean, it's uh, it's in our society now, right? Everyone likes to make a wager, and your system seems to fluctuate. It's one of those things where you either put up or shut up. If you if you play well, you're going to go up in your system. I guess a lot of your followers are using this, right, to wager. Yeah, I've heard stories of people getting a few bucks, winning, thanks to uh, my system. Yeah, <laughs> not yet have somebody uh, told me that they're millionaires, but maybe that'll come uh, in the, the coming years. But it's really a big thing for my uh, for my system. I also use it myself. I've won a few uh, quid on it. And, uh, in Holland, it's not yet a big thing, because in Holland, you only have one betting company, and it's owned by state. But uh, in the coming years, they are going to open the market and... Uh, is going to take a big rise uh, from here as well. Well, absolutely. And, of course, betting worldwide. So the website's a good source for people that like to put a buck or two down. Uh, I know you're very confident about your system. A couple of tweets I found very interesting on your timeline. You recently tweeted about K. Edmund of Canada. Now, I did a search. All I could find was a Kylie Edmund. Uh, has a very high ranking, but you've never seen him play. And then I like this tweet. I was in doubt. Uh, you checked him out. He had a great ranking on Dark Connect. These sorts of things alongside the everlasting testing really give me the idea that this system is going to be special and an asset to darts journalism. I mean, you're really excited about it. Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah, it's Kylie Edmonds. Yeah, I haven't really seen him play. Only thing I do is like I um, insert the results into into my system and a number come out. And he had a 1,600 plus rating which is which is fairly good which makes him the second canadian player after jeff smith but i never seen him play so i was like is he really that good is there maybe a fault in my system or something and then he decided to uh enroll in the cdc competition to qualify and he twice two times he uh he went to the quarterfinals so that for me is uh, is i think proof of uh, the fact that the system works and that uh, Kylie Edmonds is a very good player, and we should look uh, look out for him uh, in the future. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to remember the name, Kylie Edmonds, uh, Canadian. i got to love it. So, okay, so you said he's got a 1,600 ranking just at the very top. MVG, for instance, what's his ranking? Uh, as of now, I think 1959. Wow, okay, so he's way up there. He's at the top of the charts. 
Lots yeah. of hard work has gone into this. Do you almost feel like you've got an inside scoop that you know something others don't? Sometimes I do, but it's not. It's, it's, it's always, yeah, it's always tough to 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 predict these kind of things because uh, a few years back I had Rob Cross on the radar when he uh, was an amateur. He was number twenty-two on my list, so that's really high for an amateur. At that time, I also thought of, of maybe, uh, should it, can he do it in the pro game? How is how is he gonna evolve? Well, at the start of the world championship that he won, he was uh, number four. So yeah, I think that was my biggest scoop that I had that not a lot of other people had at that time. He was a really good player, but how good he was, I think the system really really um, shows that well. How would you sum up his game in a sentence? I mean, he is playing so well of late. Well, cross, yeah, it's just it's just steady. It's just he has some he has some confidence over him that when he goes for double eighteen in particular, you know he's gonna hit it. Or triple eighteen, that's his favorite triple. You know he's gonna hit it, no doubt about it. Maybe he's a little weak on the uh, triple sixteen, especially when he, when he hits it uh, on the outside. But uh, the rest of his game is stellar. It's, it's really good. I'll tell you what, the one thing I love about darts is when these guys get in a zone, you mentioned it right there, and I had the same feeling when I watched Rob Cross take on MVG at the World Championships in that classic confrontation. I mean, I had the yeah. feeling every time he threw a dart, he wasn't going to miss. They were that good. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, Forever did nothing wrong, really, in that game. Maybe he just he just missed two or three match darts, and for the rest of the game, he... He also played very well, and yeah, he lost that game, and it was it was, I think the best the best game I saw I saw in my life, really. Yeah. I'm a Fakhev fan, but I wasn't I wasn't disappointed at all because Rob Cross really played special, and he deserved uh, deserved to be in the final. Oh man, it was so great! I was on the edge of my seat. Both guys were just hitting everything, and yeah, I had that feeling that he just wasn't gonna miss, and you get that sometimes in darts, and when they're throwing like that. I mean, that's why we love the game. Now, with respect to the numbers, we hear guys like John Part, a three-time world champion, talk about timing, that timing is everything. Some guys think the averages don't matter. I said off the top, I'm not a numbers guy. What's your take on that? Uh, some guys just think it's about timing. Yeah, I think timing is more important than averages. Obviously, averages say something about a player because if you got a 70 average, chances are you didn't play that well. And if you got a 110 average, you obviously play play well. Yeah, it, it depends on who you're playing when you look at averages. If you're playing for heavy, your, your average is going to likely go up a few points. And if you're going to play an amateur player, it's going to go down a few points. So it's not really a good indicative of how good of a player you are. Let me ask you about James Wade real quick. And this is just off the top of my head here because it seems to yeah. me... He had the reputation for a long time that he would play to another player's level and, you know, eke it out when it mattered. And all of a sudden, nowadays, I think he's leading the Premier League in averages. He's he's upped it. Well, what's your take on him? Yeah, he's really a player of, yeah, if I if I got a break, then I'm going to just concentrate on my own legs. So, uh, and right now in the Premier League, it's like he's on attack mode, really. He's every leg I want to win. Maybe it's because he knows that Leg difference can make a difference, but in the knockout, in the knockout tournaments, he's more of consolidating a, a, a lead, and that's when his uh, averages drop. Okay, we just watched the German Darts Championship. I watched it all. I was enthralled. I just loved it. So many outstanding performances, some great timely finishes. I mean, we had some uh, Keegan Brown, Pink Power, Demolition Man did well. James <coughs> Wade was perfect. You had other guys like Ricky Evans, Super Chin wins it. 80 throws in a ton plus uh, a 110 average. Anybody stand out for you? And what did you think of ET2? I think it was good. It was a nice tournament. A few uh, upsets, especially on the Saturday night, on the Saturday, Saturday evening um, uh, session. And the person who stood out for me was Keegan Brown. Michael Fahrer was averaging uh, 108. And Keegan still managed to, uh, to win 6-4. And in the quarters he played, did he play close? He played Gerwin Price. He played Gerwin yes, that was it. And he also played well. He also, yeah, for me... He was a standout, uh, standout person in that competition, even more so than uh, 
than Ricky Evans, who also played very well. Yeah, and the thing I tweeted out about how you beat MVG, do exactly what Keegan did. He averaged 104, and he went 6-for-6 six six on doubles. We talked about right. timing. He had chances on big out shots, and he took them. Yeah, this is really what DOS is about. This is what Forever says all the time. you got to do the right things at the right moments. So that's what Keegan absolutely did. He gave, him a, he gave uh, Forever a taste of his own medicine. Really what you got to do. Yeah, you got to give him a taste of You got to MVG, MVG. Okay, uh, on the first day, by the way, your system came 13 for 16 correct. Isn't the first day of one of those ETs the toughest day to pick winners? Normally it is, but this uh, this time around, it was really the Saturday evening where I got, I think, 11 out of 16, something like that. But normally it's, it's, around, it's around 75% correct. Wow, that's pretty good. World Cup selections I also found interesting. You have Netherlands, England, Scotland, 1, 2, 3, Northern yeah. Ireland at 5, the Republic at 10, and Germany at number 8. Yeah, that's right. It's all based on, uh, on ELO scores of the two top players with that nationality. Now let's talk about the Netherlands uh, Dutch darts. You're in Rotterdam, I understand. Um, yeah. You've got an interesting situation there. First off, we'll talk about Barney. Uh, the farewell nights in Rotterdam, that was special. He got the send-off he deserved, the Sea of Orange. Phil Bars put out a great tweet, for the last time in Rotterdam, and he's still hours away from playing, and all the fans were there chanting his name, standing up. They they gave him a send-off, right? Yeah, really. They really gave him a... Uh, yeah, he means so much to uh, Dutch Darts. And, uh, yeah, they gave him the send-off that he deserved. Unfortunately, he didn't play well, but, but hey, he played uh, two very good players. Yeah, it was unfortunate, really. It was really unfortunate what happened. What does he mean for Dutch darts? I mean, you're in the Netherlands. Uh, it's really exploded over there. True. Yeah, the first time that um, darts was on telly, it was uh, when RVB won uh, Lakeside in 98. And I can say, yeah, you can safely, safely say that without Barney, there wouldn't be no... MVG, there will be no what to mean. There will be no Klasse. So without him, there will there won't be no Dutch invasion in uh, in the PDC or in the BDO for that matter. Without him, there wouldn't be no uh, Dutch stars. Well, he's definitely a legend. Five times a world champion. He's been great for the game. And uh, you know, you talk about smooth rhythm. He was one of those players that when he was in the zone, he wasn't gonna miss. Okay, so. We talked about the World Cup selections. Lastly, you know, when you talk about Dutch darts, you're there. You say the top two players. Who's going to be on the Dutch team this year? In my opinion, it should be um, Van, Ger Van Gerven and Vatimena. The machine gun. Yes. He's playing very well, uh, especially on uh, on the floor. And, yeah, I think they can make a good duo. And, of course, he is uh, the number two Dutch player on the Order of Merit. Yeah. I think those, those two are, as of now, the best players in Dutch Darts. Well, listen, man, I really appreciate your time. I wish you the best of luck with the system. It's fascinating to me. And for all those people who like to put some money down and make a bet or two, you got to check them out on Twitter, at DartsAlo1. Lendl Faria, thank you so much for your time, man. The FDI system, it's called the Faria Darting Index, and you got to watch for it, at DartsAlo1 on Twitter. Check them out. Uh, Lendl Faria, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you.